technical terms to describe specific oral speech sounds. From vowels to consonants, clicks, and other sounds. What it does is it provides us with a way of describing very specifically what sound we're working with. And what we find is from that combination and what we find is through the use of those technical terms to describe the making of one oral speech sound is that their combination is super exact, so it can only describe one unique sound. Let's take a look at how this might play out when we're thinking about the contrast between two different sounds. <laughs> Here in this diagram, what I have is I have an articulatory diagram that's made to depict a specific sound. First of all, we see that the air is flowing up through the lungs and through the vocal folds. As it gets to the vocal folds, we can see that what's represented here is that we have a closed uh, position of the vocal folds, so there's more vibration, and therefore we have a voiced sound. So that already limits for us the possibilities of what sound this could be. Next, we have the air moving through into the oral uh, cavity. And in this area, we're seeing that both of the lips are involved. And as the air moves out, it creates a stop sound. It actually is a voiced bilabial stop. And that tells us that we're making a sound that needs both lips. That could be a sound that would be the b sound or the m sound. Both of those require two lips. However, the difference here is that we have a sound that is a stop, and the mm sound is a nasal sound, right? So we can only be describing the b sound, the voiced bilabial stop, rather than a voiced bilabial nasal. You see how that works? Now here we can see that actually we have an example of the mm sound and the b sound being used not in English, but in Arabic. So here I have the m sound in the word for banana, which is also here on our chart. Mose, mose. And then I also have the b sound in the word for uh, orange, which is portugal. And then also watermelon, batir. And so here we have the b letter and then also the b sound in combination with these other elements, batir. This is how we can actually use these uh, IPA symbols to represent sounds that may be in English, but may also be in other languages. And so uh, when we get into phonology, we'll be able to talk about these sounds in combination, and we'll be able to talk about how these sounds relate to one another, and uh, how they create meaning, and that will get us into talking about phonemes. But for now, you know how to use these IPA symbols, and you know how to draw an articulatory diagram. Oh, my God.